This is an Ivory Sector from 18-something, I guess. This kind of thing is sometimes called a proportional compass, but it doesn't look like a compass at all. It has two flat rectangles joined by this fancy hinge here. And look at all the scales! The L, the S, the C, and even more on the other side. Open it flat and you got a normal ruler with 12 inches. And on the other side, it's got a logarithmic scale. You gotta get some of these if you do this kind of fancy stuff to multiply and divide numbers. You clamp it. Hump, hump, hump. My sector doesn't have any maker's marks on it, but it's probably from the late 1800s. At that time, sectors were mostly being used by ship navigators, and typically they made them in ivory. Ivory is easy to work with, it polishes up nice, and it doesn't crack or warp over time like wood does. Ideal for carving these tiny straight scales into. In the 1800s it was used by navigators, but really this is a general purpose calculator. It doesn't look like it, but this thing is actually a direct descendant of the compass, like the thing for drawing circles. These things were made by the Greeks by around 400 BCE. It's made famous in Euclid's geometry, and similar things probably existed in other cultures too. Early compasses probably looked like this. It's not just for drawing circles, but it's also for working with proportions. On this one, they put the hinge right there so that no matter how you clamp it, the distance at the top is always two times the distance at the bottom. That's smart. This particular one was buried in Pompeii about 2,000 years ago. Here's a big batch of similar instruments, all excavated from Pompeii. Lots of variations on the basic hinged design. These are instruments for proportions, but the Europeans kind of lost interest for about 1,500 years. In the meantime, in Asia and Northern Africa, trigonometry was developing more, along with instruments like the astrolabe and the quadrant, which made measurements based on proportions and similar triangles. The astrolabe and the quadrant were used for surveying and navigation, but by the 1500s people understood that these kinds of proportions pop up all the time, not just in the stars, but everywhere. The basic idea of pointing one thing at an angle to the horizon, you can do all that same stuff at home with a little hinge if you're smart about it. And the smart people got to work. How about this? An adjustable proportional compass. It's like the one at Pompeii, but you can slide the pivot around to change the proportion it gives you. Now this was a nice tool. I even have a modern one here, but that's for another video. This Italian guy, Fabrizio Mordente, in the 1560s, he made this thing. This version has one big hinge with movable compass points. It still looks kind of like a compass, but using this thing was all about sliding these little pointy bits around and clamping it. And how about this? Instead of the pointy points, you can just make the whole thing flat with a bunch of movable pegs. Now yeah, it's all starting to come together. Here's one by a guy named Guidobaldo del Monte, and he got rid of the pegs. See, the pegs are kind of a pain to move back and forth, and people realize you could just use this together with another compass. The pegs don't need to be attached at all. And this other thing is really simple. No markings, it's just a hinge. These are called the dividers. By the early 1600s, the design had settled into a standard form with a major contribution by this old guy, Galileo. That's right, before he was building scopes and vexing popes, he was clamping. Galileo's first career was making and selling sectors made of brass, and he personally innovated on the types of scales that were used. Here's one from 1630 in the Galileo style, and you can see the main scales on here are basically the same as the ones on mine. So let's get this thing going here. You need the sector, and you also need some dividers. Now I have these fancy ones, but these are pretty sharp points, and I don't want to mess up the ivory. So I just made some with my 3D printer. Click on the links if you want to print out my design. And hey, just for fun, I made a sector too. So go print one out and follow along. It's a little bit easier to see for the video. Using one of these to do calculations looks like this. I measure a distance on one scale, then open this up to that distance, then I measure another distance across here, and then I read that distance on the scale. We're clamping. Like here's how to do 6 times 8. I measure 8 across one side, and then open the sector so that that distance stretches between the tens. Now hold the sector angle steady and stretch the dividers between the sixes. Now hold that on the dividers and measure it on the original scale, and there it is, 48. You gotta judge the decimal point yourself, just like on a slide rule. So how does that work? It's all about proportions. 
See, when the sector is open, the lines across make up 10 similar triangles. They all have the same proportions. So if I start with this side being 8, then that side on the 6th triangle has length 8 times 6 tenths, which if you move the decimal point is 8 times 6. Ha! You can do even bigger numbers if you want, like 42 times 27. I measured a 42 on the scale and opened the sector that far then stretch to 27 and measure it again and it looks a little more than 11. That's 1100 of course. This is, you know, an analog calculator. A lot of times the answers are going to be in between. You just got to approximate it. The sector can also do cute proportional geometry tricks. Like what if I want to divide this line segment into seven equal parts? Using modern tools, I can't think of a great way to do that. The sector does it great. Measure the whole distance with your dividers, open the sector to that distance at 7, and then each of the cross distances are various sevenths. So pick the distance for 1 seventh, and that'll be 1 seventh of your original segment. All these simple proportions use the L scale on a classic sector. That's an ordinary linear scale from 0 to 10. It has brass pegs at the tens because you're going to put your dividers there most of the times, and you don't want to scratch the ivory. The C scale is called the line of chords. This goes from 0 to 60 and it's used for working with angles. You can use the sector like a protractor to measure an angle. You open the sector to your angle, stretch across at the end, and then the C scale tells you that angle. About 40 and a half degrees. All right. The other scales are for calculating sines, cosines, and tangents. Yeah, it does that too. The S scale on the back is for sines. Let's do a sine of 30 degrees, which should be one half. You measure the dividers to one on the inches scale or whatever units you want, and then open the sector that far on the sine scale. Then you stretch across wherever angle you want. I'm gonna do 30. Measure again on the inches scale. Looks like a half, all right. I said it does cosines, but really it does secants. That's what the S scale on the front is for. And the two T scales are like that, but for tangents. One of them is for angles measured 0 to 45 degrees, and the other one goes from 45 to about 75. All of these scales basically match Galileo's design from the 1590s. And after that point, there was only one major innovation, and it came from the north. On the back side, if you open it up, this is a logarithmic scale. Napier's work on logarithms wasn't published until the 1610s, and the first logarithmic scales were made by Gunter in the 1620s. It's the same scale that would later be used on the slide rule, but instead of sliding two rules against each other, you just slide your dividers along one rule. It works okay, but really the slide rule is a lot easier to use. You just slide the thing and line it up. This business with the dividers and the clamp, it's just a lot more touchy. And since the Gunter part doesn't involve clamping at all, once you have this, the whole hinge design isn't really necessary anymore. Of course, the clamp can do stuff that slide rules can't, but over time, as calculating instruments trickle down to ordinary folks, those cute geometric proportionality tricks really weren't in demand anymore. People really wanted to multiply and divide, and the slide rule is just better for that. So most people switched over to the slide rule. And this is part of what makes them hard to come by these days. Essentially, nobody made any sectors during the 20th century. The latest ones you typically see were like from the 1880s, and there weren't all that many being made even then. So there's just not a whole lot of them still out there. And they're made of ivory, which makes them complicated to buy and sell. The laws are confusing, so eBay just has a blanket ban on all ivory. But practically speaking, all they can really do is block keywords. The seller for mine said it's made of white material. Huh? I'm on to you, man. The shape of the sector lived on for a little while longer. There was a decent industry in these sector-style hinged rulers in the early 20th century. Maybe that's another video topic. All told, it was a pretty good run from the ancient days to the seven seas. It's pretty amazing how far this little hinge managed to go. If only Euclid could have seen his little compass evolve into its final form. The first general purpose abstract calculating device since the abacus. The first analog calculator ever. Before anybody ever slided a rule, they were clamping. The invention of the slide rule in the 1600s was a monumental creation of something new and innovative, a new way of multiplying, a heroic feat of human ingenuity pushing back the boundaries of knowledge. The slide rule was a great leap into the future. But the sector wasn't about the future. It's just proportions, one of the oldest ideas in all of mathematics. 
The sector didn't harness some new power, but it recalled and elevated a truth and beauty that had existed from the beginning. Everything you need to know to understand the sector it was there all along. Euclid, Pythagoras, Brahmagupta, al khwarizmi These guys never would have invented the slide rule, but they would have loved the clamp. Mm -hmm.